as you see, here is a BT. We've been making BTs all along. But ever since the BSRs came out, which was about 1996, uh, a lot of customers wanted the new stuff. We still made BTs. We attempted to stop making them, but the demand was, no, don't get rid of that. That's a classic. So uh, we have made BTs, usually with the same circuits, the five knobs once they came out, you know, after the three knob version. So recently we came up with a new circuit. Uh, the design is different. Let's see if this one's open. Yes, it is. Okay. So these are individual circuit boards here. So they can be moved around. So if you had, let's say you had a 1991 three knob circuit and your circuit got destroyed somehow, broke or whatever, or you wanted to upgrade it, we can put this new model in your base. But it has a DIP panel switch right here, okay? Which is on the 18 volt model. And this one you can see is 18 volts. Now I can make this nine volts by only putting one battery in and shunting uh, putting a covering in uh, the base to only work with one battery if you just wanted that, which is a slightly different sound, a little less uh, power on the output, but within 95%. Also, there's an added mid-range board, which is here. This is mid-range. Of course, this is the five-knob layout, not the three-knob layout. But this exact circuit can be used as a three knob, which we're working on right now as we speak. We're making six strings, three knob. Some will have the added mid range. And uh, that'll be concentric bass and treble, the volume and the balance, which is the original BT three knob. This one, we have a top jack. Experiment we did to see people who like the jack on top rather than plugging in the side. Uh, the, uh, New BTs will be more original specs, side jack, larger headstock, so on and so forth. I don't want to give too much away yet. So we've made and will be making the BTs five knob, four knob with top jack, three knob, or four knob with the three knob included. And it can be nine volt or 18 volt. They all have the VIP panel switch. They can be nine or 18 volt. On the new BTs, we will not add the series parallel switches, which were never in the old bases which only gives you one slightly boosted sound when you put the pickup into series. So those we'll leave out, but they can be added. It's a little tight, but we can do that because we're using the same size cavity as the new model rather than the old BTs, uh, which had, you know, a tighter, more narrow cavity. When we had an expansion in the early 90s and we were adding employees, we put one crew uh, to make bolt-on parts and carving and one crew to do neck through parts and carving. So we had both things in the same building happening at the same time. Just, you know, finishing and set up were the same people. They were just busier. They had more stuff coming through. But we, sh we shrunk down a little bit over the years after different events in the world. And we got to the point where it's only economic to make the neck throughs because the same people would have to do bolt-ons. If we can only save a couple of hours of labor at most to make a bolt-on with the same guys who are making neck throughs, the bolt-ons were going to be too expensive. We would lose money on them. As it was, it was never a profitable thing to make handmade bolt-ons for the price we did. But we did sell them. We did offer them. And there were a couple thousand made. Uh, will we make them in the future? Well, in the shop situation we have right now, which I'll get into soon, uh, we're only making neck through elite models. We have limited capacity, so I decided it's best just to make elites neck throughs. When we have more capacity, we can expand models, and we'll see what happens when that comes up. Of course, you guys will be some of the first to know. We tried one or two in the early, early days, uh, and realized that most people were more comfortable with the 18 millimeter. We didn't know it needed to go wider. Uh, <clears throat> most people had trouble going from a four string to a five string or a five string to a six string. The next were wide. So the 18 millimeter, which we've sold to people that were six foot five inches tall, big hands and fingers, they never complained about eight millimeters. 
18 millimeters. So just like, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We stayed with the 18 as our standard. We did make a few 19 millimeter fives and a couple of sixes on request, which were a little bit more money to make. Uh, but currently, <clears throat> we're not going to make those right now. We may in the future offer that as an option, but currently we're sticking with the 18 millimeters. So that was kind of rare. As far as making them in a bolt-on, I think the only wide model I made in a bolt-on that I can remember was one we did for Chuck Rainey. And uh, that was uh, a five-string. I think it was uh, maybe the only five we did with him. And we made a bolt-on uh, with 19 millimeter spacing. His initials were in there, Chucky, the 24th fret. But we realized that to do that, because a bolt-on, we have to make the centerpiece separately, fit the neck, and after finish, refit it, we might as well just make a neck through. So uh, it was determined that it's not worth it to do it on a bolt-on to make one custom base. So we only offered the 19 millimeter feature on neck throughs after that. A difficult subject. One of our main employees of nearly 20 years passed away two years ago. He was the one who did all the cutting and gluing up. He started here around 99, I believe. And uh, he, had, he had, you know, gotten ill uh, and fought it for about two years. I don't want to get into that. But the other guys that were in the shop who did carving and finishing were never trained on the machines. And we did look around for a replacement. The replacement we found had his own shop and did not want to move to Percocy. So we came up with a deal similar to what we did in the early days before I ran the shop here in Pennsylvania. It is to subcontract. All the wood was here, body and neck parts are here. So when we ran out of work for the guys to do here and, and they went on to other things, uh, I started working with a new person. We did some slight redesigns. Uh, it was a good opportunity. We supplied them with neck parts and necks are already made up. We, have, we usually make necks a couple years in advance and they sit around and then we pull them out of the rack and then recheck them and then make them up. Uh, body, body wings and body parts and woods cut up already. I have tons of wood already cut to make body parts and some already glued up. So we have the, the new guy uh, do all this work for us and then, then they come back here. Almost as if he's in the next room. And uh, although we are at a limited capacity as we have been, uh, this is working out just fine. We will, you know, hopefully build up production little by little. But we're comfortable with what we have going right now, you know. We've never been uh, trying to make mass quantities of any kinds of bases, even though we did have quite a bit of handmade stuff uh, years past, 15, 20 years ago. We may not get to that level anytime soon. No, that's uh, not the thing. I'm not trying to retire. I don't have anything to do except this play some music, and occasionally play golf. So uh, no, retirement is not in the cards. I don't need to retire. I'm as healthy as I've ever been. And uh, this is what we're doing.